Okay, so, so we're looking at the Phillips curve right, with the natural rate of unemployment and inflation and PSIS and PC model. Now it's worth your while to look at these important variables because it will help us understand the model a little better. Right, we'll look at the relationship firstly between the price level, the expected price level, and the unemployment rate. The first one, the expected price level, if your expected price level increases, your nominal wage increases and your price will increase. The second one, if it's an increase in the markup by firms, the firms increase their markup, resulting in an increase in prices. Also important to remember is that the increase in the, the level of unemployment increases, your nominal wages decrease, and your prices decrease as well. Remember, there's a positive relationship between wages and prices. And your, your institutional factors, the cash flow factor, raise your Z, right, which represents the benefits to, to workers, is represented by the letter Z. If that, if that increases your, your, your wage, nominal wage will increase and your prices will also increase. Okay? Now the relationship between inflation, expected inflation and the unemployment rate. An increase in the expected inflation leads to an increase in actually inflation. The argument behind this is that if there's, if there's an increase in your expected prices, and if we expect prices to increase in the future, and then your, wages will, your nominal wages will increase and your and your prices will also increase. The argument there is that generally negotiations for wage wage increases are over a period of three years. So the expected prices are important. So the second the second point you have to remember is that given the expected inflation, an increase in the markup or an increase in the factors that affect the wage that affect wage determination, for example, your your, your Z factor, also leads to an increase in actual inflation. The third one, given expected inflation, a decrease in the unemployment rate leads to an increase in actual inflation. So, so that, that ought to make sense to you, right? If, you, if your unemployment rate decreases, it means employment increases, and that will lead to uh, increase in actual inflation, given the increase in the number of workers. The Phillips curve is a trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Uh, we, we, we know that the IS curve represents the... Uh, events in the goods market. The LM curve represents events that take place in the financial market. And the uh, PS curve, the Phillips curve, records the relationship between your unemployment and the inflation rate. When we look at the, uh, the Phillips curve, right, we need to look at a trade-off between in inflation and unemployment. Right? How much of uh, the policymakers will, will need to look at how much of inflation are we prepared to accept? And, 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 and of course, what, what is the unemployment levels as well. So when your unemployment is low, your inflation is high, and when unemployment is low, your inflation is low. If unemployment is high, your inflation is low, and sometimes negative. So there's a negative relationship between your unemployment and your inflation rate. We'll see it on, 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 on the graph just now. There's a short-run trade-off between unemployment and inflation, and policymakers could use this trade-off in, making, in deciding, making policy decisions. And that will depend on the state of the economy, the, the, the number of, of, of workers that are unemployed and uh, the inflation rate and so forth. Because like in South Africa, we have an a inflation target rate, target the level, the 3 to 6 percent. The government might, might want to keep inflation within that, within that target range. So all of these factors will, will, will decide what will help policymakers in deciding which of the two is uh, how, how to negotiate uh, unemployment with inflation. So if, 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 for example, if the high inflation is accepted, then lower unemployment will be achieved. For example, if the unemployment rate is 2%, inflation is 4%, and the higher unemployment of 4% 4, 4 will result in, in inflation 1%. And this, that's just a simple example. Now, there's a diagram that shows the PC curve. On the vertical axis, we measure inflation. And uh, we have your unemployment on, on the horizontal axis. Your, your PC curve is down sloping from left to right. Okay, so if you look at, if you look at, if you look at your, uh, your inflation, at, at, at inflation of 4%, your unemployment is, is 2%. Right? If you drop that line, at point A, if you drop that line to your unemployment line, you, you will find that your, your unemployment is 2%. But if we drop inflation, if, if inflation drops to 2%, the levels of unemployment will increase to 3.5%.
and drops further to 1%, if your inflation drops further to 1%, your levels of unemployment increases to 4%. Now, beyond, beyond 5, right, at un at unemployment rate of 6, you'll find that you now have, you'll now go, go to a negative inflation. And, and, and negative inflation is also very really dangerous. It could lead to a, a deflation spiral and then uh, the serious consequences. So, so this is a bit of theory, right, which is important, I think. In this unit, the national, the natural rate of unemployment, right? The natural rate of unemployment is the is the employment rate, is the unemployment rate where the actual inflation rate is equal to the expected inflation rate. Right? So your natural rate of unemployment is that is the employment rate where your actual inflation rate is equal to your expected inflation rate. In other words, your your natural level of unemployment is, is, is where your, your prices are equal to your expected prices. The natural rate of unemployment can be influenced by many factors in the market, such as that may affect wage setting. For example, the catch-all uh, factor like Z, right, your institutional fact that includes medical aid and working conditions, UIF, and legislation that, that, that uh, benefits workers. So, so that will influence the natural rate of unemployment, as well as the markup that is set by firms. The two, two issues that, that may influence the natural, natural rate of unemployment, one is your, your, your institutional factor, Z, and the market, markup set by firms. Right, so the natural rate of unemployment is the unemployment rate at which the actual inflation rate is equal to the expected inflation rate. We mentioned that already. Now, if there's a change in the inflation rate, it will depend on the difference between the actual employment rate and the natural, na actual unemployment rate and the natural unemployment rate. When your actual unemployment rate is higher than the natural unemployment rate, inflation decreases. So in other words, if your if your actual level of unemployment is to the right of your natural level of of unemployment, you will have your inflation will decrease. We'll see that just now. Also important is when your actual unemployment rate is lower. In the natural unemployment rate, inflation will increase it's the opposite. So therefore, the natural rate of unemployment is the rate of employment required to keep inflation constant. Let's look at the, the PC curve in terms of, of output, the ISL and PC model. And let's, let's look at the impact of the PC curve on output. To, to get to output, we've got to, if we have, if we know what the unemployment rate is, we can get to the levels of employment. And from the levels of employment, we can get to the get to the levels of output to the production function. So there's an example that, I, that we have here. Your, your, your capital N is your natural level of employment. Your L is your labor force. Your UN is your natural rate of unemployment. And the formula is your, your natural level of employment is equal to your labor force times one plus your natural rate of unemployment. Okay, and you fill in the figures. And so the first thing we get is your, if your L, your labor force is 150, the formula is 1 minus the, your natural level of unemployment, which is, we assume, 0 0.5, which is 5%. That will give you 142.5 million workers. So we've worked out the number of workers. we worked out the level of employment. And we need to use this now to get to the level of output. So to move from employment to output, we need a production function. And for this, for this particular case, we will assume that workers produce one unit only. And it follows that the national level of output, and, and, and therefore it follows that the national level of output will be as, as follows. The national level of output will be the number of workers employed times the output of workers. We know that the workers employed is 142.5 workers times the output is 1. If your unit is 142.5 million units. You have a calculation in your study guide as well. Now the difference between actual and potential output is called an output gap. So it's also useful to know this information. If your unemployment is equal, if the, un the unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate of unemployment, output is equal to your potential output. Actually, so your potential output is where you want to be, right? It's your natural rate of, of, of output. And the output gap is equal to zero and no change in inflation. So if your, if your, if your unemployment rate is equal to the natural rate of unemployment, or your potential output. Right? The, the, the out, there's no output gap. Right? The output gap is equal to zero, and there's no change in inflation. There's no de 
right, changed, you know, no change in inflation because the inflation remains constant. Now, if the unemployment rate is above the natural rate of unemployment, output is below potential output. Given the fact that your unemployment rate is above natural rate of unemployment, your output levels will be below output, between potential, below potential output, and the output therefore will now be negative. So, so remember, your unemployment is higher, is high. So therefore, your output is, will be below the potential output. Your output will be lower because of the high levels of unemployment, right? And the output gap is negative. And with a negative output gap, we have a, a decrease in inflation. So if the unemployment rate is below, the, 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 the opposite is also true. If the unemployment rate is below the natural rate of unemployment or to the left of your natural level of, rate of unemployment, output is above potential output and your output is positive. So if the output gap is positive, your inflation will increase. That's what you bear this in mind as we go along. And there we are. Here's one important diagram that we need to understand. You have you have your, your, your inflation measured on the vertical axis. You have your your, your Y line, your PC curve, right? At uh, uh, inflation rate n minus t minus one, you take it across the PC curve, you get point A. You dot that line to your Y line, you get Y. So clearly, you can see here that your actual output is greater than the natural level of, of your of natural output level. So so here we have a positive output. We have a positive uh, output gap, Y N Y A, right? Your right angle triangle. You got a, you get a positive uh, output gap, and when you have a positive output gap, you can see that your 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 levels of inflation is increasing, it's increasing from zero upward. If we look at a point to the left of Y N, if we look at a point, it's not in the diagram. But if we look at a point to the left of Y N, you will find that your you you'll have if you dot that line to the PC curve you'll get a negative output, a negative output gap. And when you have a negative output gap, your inflation is decreasing, right? It might, and it will be a, a negative inflation figure. Let's, let's look at now the ISLM PC model and look at the short run equilibrium position initially. In the short run, we have your interest rate R, your point A, is at the point where your IS curve cuts the LM curve. So your given this, given the IS curve and LM curve and given R, your equilibrium point is A and your equilibrium level of income and output is Y in, in, in the IS LM model on the top. Zero is a point of origin. Now if we drop that line to the bottom to the PS the Phillips curve diagram, you'll find that your Y is to the right of Y N. And therefore that 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 suggests that there is a positive output gap. So, so we can conclude that the, that, the, that the interest rate, the real interest rate of the policy rate, which is often, often referred to your interest rate, is often referred to as a policy rate chosen by the central bank is equal to R, we know that, and it is associated with the, the level of output as, as given by Y, where the IS curve intersects the LM curve. So this is your short term equilibrium at point A. And you'll find that there is a deviation away from your natural level of output. Right? It's your y is your your actual output is to the right of y n, giving you a, a a positive output gap, and your inflation is increasing. If we now move to the medium term, working yeah, when we look at the, the adjustment process from the short run to the medium run, policymakers now will use interest rates to influence the rate of the level of output and the inflation rate. We know that inflation is, is rising. And a rising inflation, if not controlled, can be dangerous. Your, your policy makers, and more specifically the central bank, will look at the influence of the infl uh, change in the infl infl inflation rate, may decide to now implement a contractionary monetary policy. Right? By implementing a, a contractionary monetary policy, right, the central bank, the intention is to bring down inflation, to bring down inflation to, to acceptable levels and bring the economy back to the natural level of, of output, Yn. So if that is going to happen, your LM curve will shift, it will be a parallel upward shift. Right? We've discussed the A, there will be a parallel upward shift to LM1. Your new policy rate is now Rn. Your new equilibrium point is A bar. Your new LM curve cuts the IS curve at a, at a new point. So in other words, the economy will move up, up, up the IS curve 
from A to A bar. The increase in the in the repo rate, repo in the sorry in the policy rate occurs as a result of of intervention by by the central bank to curb the inflation rate and bring the economy back to the natural level of output. So if you drop that line from the A bar at the top, you bring it down to the PC curve. It cuts the PC curve in the Y line at A bar, and you'll find that the levels of output has, has shifted to the to the left, and we're now back to the natural level of output, natural level of output. If your output is equal to your potential output, the output gap is zero, and there's no pressure on inflation. And let's look at the medium term. So, so we now look at how the economy moves from the short run to the medium term equilibrium position. So this is the theory which you can go through. I've discussed that with you just now. What I want to do now is, is to do an important exercise with you. We now want to use the ISLMPC curve to consider the impact of fiscal policy that fiscal policy will have on the economy. So we distinguish between the short run and the and the uh, and the medium run impact by assuming that government increases taxes to deal with its budget deficit. Taxes, so so an increase in taxes right, results in a, in an improvement in the budget deficit, right? And uh, this is considered to be a contractionary fiscal policy. So a contractionary fiscal policy, remember, will affect the IS curve, and uh, your IS curve will shift to the left, and the short run equilibrium position is reached. So, so there we are. Firstly, we have an increase in gov uh, increase in taxes to shift the IS curve to the left, and the new uh, IS curve S1 IS1 will cut the LM curve at A1. You dot that line, you get your equilibrium level of income and output, Y1. And if you dot that line, you get A bar, which is below your, 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 your Y line. The left -width shift in the IS curve is, is a short run position. And it's important to understand the implications of, the left, of a left -width shift in the IS curve. The, the influence of this will affect your consumption levels, your investment, output, and inflation. And as the economy moves from the short run position from its initial equilibrium point A. So when we move from the short run to the medium run, by considering the impact of a decrease in the policy rate now by the central bank. So we must understand what will happen to the various what happens to the, the different variables that we spoke about just now. If the government ex experiences a budget deficit, we can now we can now uh, reduce the deficit by increasing taxes. Right? We, we spoke about that. So, so your Y end will move to Y1, and your your natural level, your 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 Y will now be to the left of your Y end, and your inflation will start decrease, will start decreasing. So, so in the short run position, uh, we have a point where fiscal policy has resulted in a recession, because you find now your your levels of output, the actual output is now below Y end, and your inflation is is is, is in, in the negative territory. So, so in, in, in the medium term now, the, uh, the central bank will now enter the market and implement an expansionary monetary policy to get the economy out of the recession. Right? They will implement an expansionary monetary policy, which results in a decrease in the, in, the, in the policy rate from RN to RN1. That will cause a parallel downward shift in the LM curve from LM to LM1. And the new LM1 curve cuts the new IS curve at, at a, a double bar. Your levels of output now increases from Y1 to YN. So, so the intervention by the central bank to 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 drop the interest rates right, has now moved the economy back to your natural level of output. Is that where we want to be? And if you drop that down to the PC curve, you have your YN is, is achieved again. So that's where you so, so expansion of monetary policy has resulted in an increase in the level of income and output, and your YN is is achieved. So in other words, your output is at its potential level of output. So in, in, in the medium run, right, the economy looks more attractive right, with, your, with the economy moving back to its natural rate of, of, of output. The policy rate needs to maintain output at potential that is lower than before. Right, it decreases from RN to RN1. Right, if you look at this, you can go to the theory on your own. And I want to look at this Tutor Activity 25. Discuss the following statement. Adjustment to the medium term is always easy. If output was too low, the central bank decreases the interest rate until output reaches 
the natural level of output and income. If output is too low, the central bank decreases the real interest rate until output reaches the natural level of output and, and natural level of output and income. Is that true? It's not true because the economy is 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 is, is in a liquidity trap or, a, or a, in a deflationary trajectory. So an expansion money money policy could lead to a deflation spiral. What we're saying here is the economy is already in a recession, and when you are in a, in a, in a liquidity trap, and the investors and and and, and, uh, and, and, and consumers are not confident at in investing the money in the economy, they're not confident at all. So they will hold the cash back and will make. Uh, make the situation even worse. So an expansion monetary policy could could make could, could lead to a further spiral, could lead to a further spiral, a deflation spiral in the economy because of the lack of confidence. Essentially, your, your money, expansion monetary policy will not work if the economy is already in a liquidity trap or in a deflationary trajectory direction. The next question is: Assume the following scenario to distinguish between the short run and the medium run impact on the ISLM PC model. The government decides to decrease government spending to deal with its budget deficit. Now we did an example just now and on the decrease in, in tax the increase in taxes and we're looking at the decrease in, 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 uh, in government spending. Now what I want to do now in this in this exercise is to give you the, the chain of events. We looked earlier at the theory and what happens when there's a when there's an increase in government taxes and we said that it's it's a, it's a contractionary policy policy, right? Now here we have a decrease in government spending which is also contractionary and it's, and it's, and it's done to, de to deal with the budget deficit. So, so whilst this question is the same, but I wanted to do this question with you because I want to explain this using a uh, chain of events, which I think is extremely important. So, so in this particular tutorial activity, you are required to explain the impact of a decrease in government spending. On, the, on, on consumption, investment, the demand for goods and services, potential output, unemployment policy rates, natural rates of interest, and the change in the in interest rate. Now, we, we've looked at this diagram just now. So we know that a decrease in government spending would shift the IS curve to the left, and the economy is the point where output is lower than the potential output, A1. So then what happens now is that your central bank will enter the market and and implement an expansionary monetary policy by decreasing the interest rates from Rn to Rn1. So the LM curve shifts downwards to LM1. So your economy now moves along the IS curve, IS1 curve from A1 to A bar, double bar, and you get back to your YN, natural rate of, of output, and then if you drop that line to the, PH, the PC curve, you, got, you go back to your natural level of output. Now we want to look at the chain of events. But I think it is extremely important for examination purposes. And when there's a decrease in government spending, now the chain of events in the short run, let's look at the short run. The short run is the movement of from point A to A bar. That's the short run movement along the LM curve from A to A bar. So what is the impact of, of that on the goods market? The decrease in government spending will cause a decrease in the demand for goods and services, the levels of output decrease. Output decreases, your disposable income decreases, consumption decreases. If your Y decreases, your investment decreases. And remember the, the multiplier process is in operation. Okay? It's always in operation. The impact on the financial markets, a decrease in the, in the level of income and output Y will result in a decrease in the demand for money. Your supply of money will also decrease. So what is, what is the impact on the exchange rate in, in, in the short run? The exchange is un 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 unchanged because your investment in this case is autonomous. What is the impact on the trade balance? The question says that the output is lower than potential. The output is now lower than potential, right? We see it here. It's, it's to the left of YN. So therefore, your employment increases to your natural level of unemployment. If your unemployment increases, is greater, is or rather, if your unemployment is greater than your natural level of unemployment, your actual Output is less than your natural level of output. Remember that. If your if your natural level of unemployment, and I beg your pardon, if your if your unemployment rate is greater than your natural level of unemployment, to the right of your natural level of unemployment, you're, you'll find that your actual output is less than your your natural level of output. That should make sense. 
Therefore, your output gap is, is negative and inflation will decrease. So if we move on to the, on, on, on to the medium adjustment from, from A1 to A2, as we move down the economy, uh, down the IS curve, the economy moves down the IS curve from A1 to A2, and you'll find that the economy moves back to YN, right, and uh, which is your natural rate of output, and you'll find that in the PC curve. Now let's let's look at, let's look at the chain of events here. A non-constant inflation rate will prompt the central bank into action, right, because the inflation rate now has has changed. A negative change in inflation will prompt the central bank because of the negative change in, in inflation the central bank will, it will implement a, 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 an expansion of monetary policy by decreasing the interest rates and in so doing this will increase the level of output as it approaches the natural level of output and let's look at the chain of events so what is the impact on the financial market your monetary expansion will decrease your your policy rate r which is your interest rate now, what is the impact of this on the goods market? Because of your lower interest rates, the levels of output will, will move towards, will, will increase, the actual output will increase and move towards your natural level of output. The chain of event is if there's a decrease in, in, your, in your interest rate, R, investments will increase, and that's a direct relation there. If your investments increase, the demand for goods and services increase, and your actual output increases. Output, actual output increases, your investment increases. So that chain of events there, you know, you know, Y increases, disposable income increases, and your consumption increases. And throughout this process, the multiplier process is in operation. So this is the medium term adjustment, guys. We're moving from, from Y to YN. The situation in the medium term compared to the initial position, I right, compared in point A2 now to A. Right, we have a, a, a double bar now, okay? So your, a decrease in your in your policy rate Rn, right? So your your output levels now will move from Y to Yn. Right? There's your output levels from right will move to Yn in, in your from Y1 in the in the diagram to Yn. And if you drop that line to the to the PC curve, you find that it cuts the the Y line at zero. Okay, so you've achieved your the central bank has achieved the goal of moving the economy back to the natural level of output. So your drop in R, in interest rates decrease, Z, uh, your demand for goods and services increase, and your output increases. If your output increases, your investment increases. Increase in output, your demand for goods and services increase, consumption increases, and, and you know, you, all this result is, is a, occurs as a result of a decrease in government spending. So what can we conclude from this? Right? How does government spending influence the uh, is influenced by uh, the ISL and PC model? The level of output is now back to its natural level in medium term. The real rate, real interest rate needed to maintain a natural output level, which is now lower than before, means that investment spending is even higher than before the contractionary fiscal policy. So the contractionary fiscal policy, your, your IS curve shifted to the left. And therefore, your investments decreased, and the level of output decreased. And with the uh, with the expansion of monetary policy, the drop in the interest rate has now resulted in an increase in investments, and your investment spending is now higher than before the contraction of the fiscal policy. Government spending is lower, and consumption spending is back to its initial level. Right? I've got a few multiple choice questions for you, and let's see whether you are okay with this. So this will tell me whether you understood the work we've done. Which of the following statements is a correct given the equation? P is equal to your expected price into 1 plus M into 1 minus alpha U plus Z. So the alpha is, is, is it captures the strength of, your, of, of the effect of unemployment on wages. So your, 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 the, the, the alpha, what is the effect of unemployment? What is the effect of the level of unemployment on, on, the, on, the, on the nominal wage? So, so there's an option now, given that statement. An increase in, in the unemployment rate leads to a decrease in nominal wages, which in turn leads to lower prices and a decrease in the price level. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Good, good. Yes, it's true. Let's look at B. An increase in the unemployment rate leads to an increase in nominal wage. 
which in turn leads to higher prices and the increase in the price level. Is that true? Right. That's false. Correct. Correct. C. Anybody wants to dispute that, you just let us know, okay? A decrease in, un in the unemployment rate leads to an increase in nominal wages, which in turn leads to higher prices and an increase in the price level. What do you think here? I think B is false. Sorry. B is false. Yes. C. What about C? Look at A and look at C. C e is true. It is correct. It is correct. So in other words, a decrease in unemployment will lead to an, will lead to a, uh, an increase in your nominal wages and your prices will increase. What about D? Is false. So only A and C is correct. Good. Very good. Very good. Let's look at the second one. Which of the following statement is are correct, given, the, given that equation that we spoke about, right? Given expected inflation, an increase in the markup or an increase in the catch-all variable Z, the institutional factors, leads to an increase in actual inflation. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Yes, yes that is true. So your chain of events will be, if your, if your expected inflation, given your expected inflation, your, your markup increases, that will lead to your increase in your inflation. If your markup increases, your prices are going to go up. Isn't it? So your inflation is going to increase. And also true is that your, your casual variable Z, if your Z increases, more people will be employed and your inflation rate will increase. So A is correct. What about B? Do you like me to repeat A? It's for, B is false. Yeah, so B is false. Yeah. Given your expected inflation, a decrease in the markup or a decrease in the catch-all variable Z will decrease actual inflation. True. True. It's the opposite of A. D, an increase in the markup by firms leads to a decrease in the price level. It's false. It has to be false, right? So the correct answer is A and C. Option 5. Option? Let's look at the third, third, the third question. Which one of the following statements is correct? According to the original Phillips curve, the short-run trade-off between unemployment and inflation means that when unemployment was high, inflation was low. When unemployment was high, inflation was high. When unemployment was high, inflation was zero. When unemployment was low, inflation was low, which is correct. One is true. Yes. Right? Remember, remember that the Phillips curve, right? Your, your Phillips curve uh, gives us the trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Okay. If your inflation increases, your unemployment decreases. Inflation decreases, your unemployment increases. So there's a there's a negative relationship between inflation and unemployment, which number one. The fourth, the fourth question, which of the following statements is correct? According to the modified Phillips curve or the expect expectations augmented Phillips curve, there is a negative relationship between, one, the change in inflation and the unemployment rate, actual inflation and the unemployment rate, expected inflation and the unemployment rate, change in inflation and the unemployment benefits. The correct answer, you guys, is option one. So, so the negative relation between uh, the, the, the change in your inflation, when, you, when inflation, inflation changes and the unemployment rate, that's the correct answer, the change in inflation and the unemployment rate, which is often called the modified Phillips, modified Phillips curve, the modified Phillips curve. So uh, the reasoning would be because it's a modified Phillips curve, right? Yes. The first one, given the equation, P is equal to expected prices into 1 plus M into 1 plus U plus Z. An increase in the unemployment rate leads to a decrease in nominal wages, which in turn leads to lower prices and a decrease in the price level. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. That is true. Second one, given the equation P is equal to PE into 1 plus M into 1 minus U, U, U plus Z. Lower the catch-all variable the higher the nominal wage, which in turn leads to an increase in the price level. Higher catch-all variable. So if your catch-all variable is, is higher, and your, your, your institutional factors mean, it means that it will benefit workers. And that being the case, right, you'll have a higher, more people will be employed, therefore your nominal wages will be higher, and that will lead to an increase in price level. Does that make sense to you guys? Oh, yes, yeah. A negative relationship 
occurs between expected inflation and actual inflation. That look, there's a positive relation between yeah. expected inflation and actual inflation. If there's an increase, I'll tell you why. If there's an increase in expected inflation, inflation will increase. Right? If there's an increase in your, your expected inflation, that will lead to an increase in, in inflation, in actual inflation. And the opposite is true as well. Okay. So that, that statement is, is, is false. Look at four. Is four true or false? It is false, guys. Why is it false? If your unemployment rate decreases, right, it means your, your employment increases. Isn't that so? If unemployment decreases, employment increases. So what will happen? You will be increasing your actual inflation. The actual inflation will increase because more 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 people will be your employment levels will increase. There will be a greater demand on goods and services. Prices will increase. Your actual inflation increases, not the decrease. Number five, a positive relationship exists between unemployment rate and actual inflation. That will be false. Yeah, that will be false. It's false, yes, that's correct, it's false. There's a negative relationship between unemployment and your actual, actual inflation. inflation. The relationship between inflation and the employment rate is called the Phillips curve. It's false. Number seven. Mm -hmm. The original Phillips curve disappeared in the 1970s because wage setters or workers changed how they form the expectations about inflation. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Yes. Number eight, tell me. It will be false. I think it's the change in inflation. So, 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 so we have a, a negative relationship between the, between a, the change in inflation. That is important. And the, and, and the unemployment rate. Very good. Number nine, the change in the inflation rate depends on the difference between the actual inflation rate, the actual employment unemployment rate, and the natural unemployment rate. Is that true or false? Anybody? Change in, your change in inflation, change in the inflation rate depends on the difference between the, the unemployment rate and the natural level of unemployment. The difference between your unemployment rate and the, between the actual unemployment and the natural level of unemployment. So that statement is false. What about number 10? Number 10 is true. I want to wish you guys all of the best in the examination. Okay. Good night, guys. All the best to you. And uh, I wish you well.